All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up a Synology NAS for the very first time. Synology has made this really easy. Basically, your first steps are to get some NAS drives and put them in the NAS. A NAS drive is a hard drive specifically designed to be on 24 seven with a bunch of hard drives next to it. So if you think of a regular hard drive, it is the only hard drive in your computer generally. And so that means you don't have to worry about cross vibrations. But with a NAS, you end up getting a bunch of drives all next to each other, all vibrating at a very similar frequency. This means that you can end up getting crossover frequencies and end up getting much worse vibration than a regular hard drive setup. So because of this, and the fact that NAS drives are on 24 seven, it is highly recommend that you splurge and you get a NAS drive. Otherwise, your drives are gonna be a lot more likely to die than they would be if they were proper NAS drives. And so the NAS drives I use are actually these Seagate Ironwolves, and I'll leave a link to them in the description. They're really solid price point, and I've just never had any issues with them. So their biggest competitor is Western Digital with their NAS line. However, I would be slightly wary of it because they have actually put in SMR drives. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on what an SMR drive is, but essentially, because of the way they're manufactured, to save money, they have very poor write performance if you're writing a lot of data to the drive. And with a NAS drive, this can get really bad, especially on RAID rebuilds. So I would not recommend looking at any SMR drives if you're gonna be putting them in a NAS. For an external hard drive that you're just dumping data to, it's really not gonna be that big of a deal. But for a NAS, you don't want to have to deal with SMR drives. Instead, get CMR drives, and there's a ton of links on the internet about which of those drives to get. Personally, I just get the Seagate Ironwolf drives, and they've not had any problem for me. Another really nice thing is, they've got much lower power consumption, and they're a lot quieter than regular hard drives. And when you've got five or six of them in a array together, that really starts to matter. So with your NAS, you're gonna get these caddies. I've actually already got a drive in them, but they're really easy. They've just got these clips on the sides that you use to put the drive in and then clip it in. And then from there, it just slides right back in and push to lock. And it's just that simple. So, All right, and so once you put your hard drives in, just go ahead and plug your network cable in and your power cable in. And honestly, all you gotta do is press the power button. So once you press the power button, give it a minute to boot up, and then we're gonna go into your internet browser. All right, so once you've powered up your NAS, you're gonna hear a beep after a minute or two. After that, go to find.synology.com and just go to that in your web browser. It'll go ahead and open up this great web app that searches your entire network for Synologies. And so you should see the new Synology on this. And all you have to do is click connect. Accept. And it's got this super simple setup menu all from your web browser. I would recommend just installing the latest and greatest DSM. So just click install now. And so it's just gonna remind you here that any data on the hard drives that you plugged in is going to be formatted and lost. So don't try to plug in the hard drive you've been using for data and try to get the data on the Synology like that. Any drives that you put in here are going to be formatted. And so now it's just installing Synology DSM. One thing to note, if you've never used these hard drives before, if they're new drives, it's actually not a bad idea to put these drives through a stress test. If you're not super computer savvy, it's really not that necessary. But basically what you do is you hook up your hard drive directly to the computer. And what you do is you just write a ton of data to it overnight. And because hard drives generally fail in the very beginning of their lives or will last for years, it will probably catch any dead on arrival drives that might be working for the first few minutes before failing. That's just one thing that a lot of people recommend doing. If you're not super computer savvy, it's really not that critical because drives do generally still have a very low failure rate for dead on arrival drives. But it's just something I thought I would mention. 
All right, and so after some rebooting, we are now brought to the DSM screen, and we're going to be creating an account. Another thing to note, if you look up here, you're going to see the IP address of your Synology NAS. That's what it is right now. So that means we're actually on the Synology's page. So here you get to name it your server name. Basically, this is going to be the host name, and it cannot have any spaces. Then set up your username and your password. And especially if you are planning on at one point opening the, this up to the internet so you can access it remotely, make sure to have a very secure password on there. I'm actually planning on making a security tutorial soon. DSM makes it really easy to get to your NAS from outside of your network, but it does have some security vulnerabilities. So make sure to have a very strong password if you plan to do that. All right, and so here is where you can set up Synology Quick Connect. So I'm just going to use my already signed up Quick Connect account. And so what it will do is it will actually create a Quick Connect address for you that will allow you to connect to this NAS from anywhere in the world very easily. It actually doesn't even require port forwarding. Synology takes care of all of that just for you. So now anytime you type this address into your bar, it will take you to your NAS and just hit go. All right, so once you go through all of the, hey, these are the tutorial screens, you get to what's called the DSM web page. Basically, this is the operating system on your Synology NAS. You can access it from anywhere in your network and it makes it very easy to set up your NAS. This is what really sets Synology apart from all the other NAS options because it's just got such an intuitive and easy to use web interface. So there are a couple of things that we're going to want to do in control panel first. So first off, just go into advanced mode. It's a lot easier. And we're going to choose quick connect. So right now it automatically has enabled quick connect. If you're not planning on needing to access your NAS from outside of your network, just disable that right now because it's opening up your NAS to unnecessary security things. And so let's go back to the home. And so another thing we're going to want to do is go into hardware and power. And this is what gives you some pretty basic options. It actually allows you to set how loud your fans are. So if I can set it really loud and you'll hear it, or you can set it to cool. Really, I have found that quiet mode is completely fine. I've never really had too many heat issues, but I also do use NAS drives. If you are using off the shelf drives, make sure to have it at least cool mode because those do produce a lot of extra heat. And this is where you can set up what beeps do and things like that. And finally, we're going to go into user. And you want to make sure that the admin account has been disabled because the admin account leads to a security vulnerability because if you don't change this login information for it and you have it enabled, somebody could use those credentials to log in. So I would just recommend always having it disabled. All right, and so that's it. So now we're going to close out of control panel and now we're going to set up our hard drives. So to set up our hard drives, go into this button, which is basically an app dropdown menu. And we're going to go into storage manager. And so storage manager is used to show you all the statuses of your drives. So if you go into HDD slash SDD, your hard drives and your SSDs, you're going to see the drives you've plugged in. So I just threw in a couple of old drives I had for this tutorial and you can see their health info and basically the power on hours, everything like that. You're also going to want to make sure to set up smart tests and actually right off the bat, Synology starts you out by running smart tests every month for you. Basically smart test checks over your disks and make sure that they're not about to fail. And so they're good to enable. I like to do mine weekly, but monthly is fine too. All right. So now let's actually go through and create our first storage pool. So go into storage pool and click create. So once you click that, you're going to be given this menu and it unfortunately is not super clear about which of the two choices you're choosing between. So better performance leads to a standard rate, which does have some better performance, but it's really not that significant. 
Higher flexibility uses Synology Hybrid RAID, or SHR. So it depends on which of those two you're using. If you're not planning on having redundant hard drives, just choose better performance. But if you are, I would recommend choosing higher flexibility and it's a lot easier to go through with. So we're gonna be selecting higher flexibility, but I'll just go ahead and show you what the options are for the regular RAID. So this is where you get to choose which RAID type you would like to do. You can do RAID 1, Basic, JBOB, or RAID 0. I only have two drives in, so these are the only possibilities. So I would highly recommend having at least one drive of fault tolerance in your NAS because hard drives can fail all the time due to mechanical failure. So if you choose RAID 1, you will have that. Basic is not RAID at all. It is just the normal hard drive that you think of. You basically just plug it into your computer. It's a single volume. JBOD stands for just a bunch of disks. And so it's basically just a big one single volume that is just continuous on different disks. So once the first disk fills up, it'll start writing to the second disk. And then RAID 0 is very similar to it. Data is going to be written to both disks at the same time, meaning you get better read and write performance out of it. But I would highly recommend just going back and choosing higher flexibility and setting up SHR. And so with SHR, you get two choices, SHR1 or SHR2. And since this only has two drives in it, I don't have the option for SHR2. I have only got the option for SHR. So one thing to note, if you do choose Synology Hybrid RAID, you will basically lose one disk of storage to your NAS. Basically take the largest disk in your group, and that amount of storage is what you'll subtract from the total amount of hard drive space you've got on your drives. And so for a two drive array, you're gonna be losing half your storage, but it means that an entire drive can fail and you will still have access to all of your data. I'll let you do your own research on which of these to do, but if you want to make sure your data is secure, I would do SHR, it's just a lot easier. And so we're gonna select SHR and click next. And so also you're really gonna to wanna to perform the drive check because it's basically gonna go through and read data across the entire drive, even though there's not data on there. If it starts finding areas of the drive that have bad parts of it, it will write a map of those and make sure not to try to write data to them. And so it becomes less likely that you will get data corruption. So I would highly recommend setting up that. And just hit apply. And so you can see right here that the drives are being verified in the background. You can still use your Synology. You'll just get slower performance out of it. One thing to note here, what I've put in here is a three terabyte drive and a five terabyte drive. But if you look, it's only got 2.7 terabytes and 4.5 terabytes. This is because Synology takes 10% off the top of every drive. This alleviates the case where you completely fill up a drive and crash it. So it's a good thing. But if you're wondering what happened to your storage, that is what it happened. And so now we've got a storage pool. So basically we have bricks of storage, but now we need to create a volume. So we're gonna go in the volume tab. We're gonna go and just click create. And so just go into the next, choose existing, and choose the storage pool we just set up. You've probably just got one, click next. And so now you can choose between BTRFS and EXT4. I've got a video comparing these two. I would highly recommend choosing BTRFS. And so now we're just creating the volume. All right, and so now we finally created that volume. So this means we're finally gonna be able to start creating files and storing files on our Synology. So now we can exit out of this and go into control panel. And then from within control panel, go to shared folder and we're gonna create a new one. So this is gonna be your shared folder. This is where you're actually gonna be putting storage. And you can put multiple of these in there and you can also set up permissions for these differently. And so say you want a work folder. So you give all of your coworkers access to that folder and then you've got a personal folder where you give access to you and your family members maybe. And so just give it a name. 
And then I would highly recommend having a recycling bin because otherwise if you delete it, it's gone. Here you can choose whether or not to encrypt it. I've got a video on that that I'll also be putting in the description. It's really up to you and how critical you think this data is to you. You're definitely going to want to select enable checksum because that allows BTRFS to check the health of the data on there. So you're not as likely to get flipped bits and corrupt data. And just hit apply. And so here's where you can choose who's got access to it. And make sure to give your user and anybody else you'd like to get access to it, access to it. And just click OK. All right. And so now we've got our first drive, and that's great. The next thing we need to do is be able to access it from our computer. I'm just going to show you how to set up SMB really quickly. And so that is the recommended protocol. So you just go into File Services, and SMB has already been enabled. I would make sure to also disable AFP unless you're going to be using it and in FS and just hit apply. So now let's go about being able to access it on our computer. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go into finder. What I'm going to do is click command K and it's going to pull up this connect to server. I'm going to type SMB colon slash slash the name, which is Todd dot local. First time it's going to give you a confirmation screen because it's the first time you've connected to it. And then just like that, it's mounted. You may be asked for your password. Mine's actually already saved in here from when I was making sure I could get this done earlier. And now you can just use it like any other drive on your computer. Just copy files to it. And just like that, they are now on the server. We can go back here and go into file station and we can see that that folder I just copied over is now on the drive and so it's super easy to use and so now let's say we close out of it how are we going to get back to DSM well by far the easiest way is going to be to just type todd.local this way we don't have to remember our IP address or anything like that. We can just use that. This is because I named the server Todd and so its host name is Todd. That basically means that my network knows that anytime I say Todd.local, that I am looking for the IP address of Todd on the server. All right, and so realistically that's it. Now you've got your Synology NAS up and running, and I've got a bunch of other tutorials that you can check through for any other thing you'd like to do on your Synology. Go ahead and put any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.